All right, what's going on all you adventurers, shooters, and like-minded troublemakers? So I wanted to quickly show you something today. This gun is unloaded. That's why I just, I just kind of flagged myself a little bit, but it is definitely unloaded. No mag, just showing you all that before all you, everybody in the comments goes crazy about that. Uh, this is the new Taurus GX4. This is something that some people have talked about, but not everybody knows it. So the new Tauruses now take Glock sights, which is pretty darn cool because there are a lot of night sights, whether you like True Glow, Ameriglow, Trijicon, uh, but sometimes some of these new guns are the hardest ones to find and fit just because if everybody has a different model of sights for different guns, it takes a while for the market to catch up. So the fact that Taurus used a standard Glock dovetail and a screw in front sight is awesome. So I think they actually started this on the G2C and that's when they first had compatibility with Glock sights. Now I know there were a few point of aim, point of impact concerns. Um, some of them worked awesome, some of them had a few issues. But then I think they fixed that on the Taurus G3. So the GX4 is their, their newest kind of micro compact pistol. So really cool pistol and this takes the 4243 sights. Now you may look at it and say, well, I thought all Glock sights had the same dovetail and same front sight. Yes, but the single stack ones are different than the double stack in terms of the rear sight fitment. The front sights are pretty much all the same. So if you're gonna get Glock sights for this, whether it's True Glow, Ameriglow, wherever, um, I'm gonna put on the new Tritium Pros just cause I really like these sights. These are some of the brightest night sights I've found. They're really compact, they don't snag, they're solid steel, I love them but you're gonna want the 42, 43X, 48, those single stack slides. So we're gonna show you how to put these on. And if anybody's watching from YouTube, no, I'm not gunsmithing. I'm not showing how to manufacture a firearm. This is a commonly interchangeable part and I'm just replacing a part. So we're gonna go ahead and take this gun down. To do so, you just take either a screwdriver, a key, piece of brass, anything like that, put it in here, turn it this way. You'll see it leap forward just slightly Pull the trigger, comes right off. Looks very similar to a SIG P365 on the inside uh, by using almost this internal chassis system inside the frame, and the upper looks very similar to a Glock 43. So not a lot of original ideas here, but just a, a great iteration of just manufacturing based on just some common ideas that work well. One thing I do wanna show you really quick, when you put that back on, do not turn this clockwise. You, if you do that, it looks like it will come off, but you'll notice nothing comes loose and it binds up. You'll wanna always go from straight up and down. You'll hear it pop into place. You'll wanna turn it counterclockwise. You'll see it leap forward a little bit, pull the trigger, good to go. So obviously make sure the gun's unloaded. For this, we just need the slide. I guess you could do it with the barrel and guide rod in, but you don't need them anyway, so you might as well take them out. Um, without a trigger, you're not gonna set the gun off, but just no reason to have them in there, so go ahead and take them out. Like I said, today we're installing the Tritium Pro from True Glow, great night sights, and that's these right here. So these sights, that's your, come on this little sticky tray. Front sight comes with a little screw. Rear sight has a little set screw, so you're gonna push this in, and then the set screw just holds it in place. And then it also comes with this other screw. So this is for Gen 4 Glocks. Uh, that's the Glock spec. So on this Taurus, I don't know if we're gonna need this screw that matches the Gen 3 Glocks or if we're gonna need this one. So we're gonna try it with this one first, see how it goes, go to that guy if we have to. So we are gonna start with the front sight. So front sight, you're gonna take your Allen key and if you're like me, a bunch of you heathens out there probably just have Allen keys and something like this. This is horrible. Just a big tub and you just see which one fits it. In case you're wondering, I tried the 330 seconds, had a hell of a time with it before realizing, oh, this is made in Brazil. It's probably metric, and it is. It's a two millimeter hex. You're gonna take that, you're gonna loosen up, there's a little screw down inside of there. You're gonna loosen that up. See my sight spinning? You're gonna hold your sight just so it won't spin on you. Or once you get it loose, you can probably just hold the screw and then spin the sight. So the front sight just unscrews. So the sight itself, sight body is threaded. The screw comes out the bottom. 
So we're just going to dump that out. You may want to hang on to this, so I'm just going to put it back together real quick. Yeah, I know my hands are all greasy from all this gun oil and stuff. But that's fine. We're working, right? So I'm just going to put this in here just to keep them together. I don't think I'll ever put this back on, but just hang on to it just in case. It's good practice, right? So you'll see that we've got a little slot just like on a Glock. And now we're going to put our front side on. So this is a tool also from True Glow. There's a whole bunch of these out there. I really like this combo tool. Um, it's just a hex up front, but it's got a little magnet on the inside. So it actually holds the screw for you. And then it's got a punch on the back. So you can actually use this to take down the frame pins on a Glock. This gun doesn't have those type of frame pins. So we're only using this in today. So you're going to loosen that screw. Fits perfect because they're both designed by the same company for the same sites. Like I said, there's other ones out there, but this one just, it, it's easy. So we're just gonna test fit this first. When we actually install it, we're gonna use some of this Loctite, but right now, just wanna make sure it all works before we lock it down, right? So that's really, really tight. Like it's, it's borderline a press fit. But the number one pe thing people screw up when they're putting on night sights is they use a hammer. You can call True Glow, call Trigicon, call any night sight manufacturing company, and the number you'll ask them the number one way people screw up their sights is pounding them in there. So we don't want to do that. So I'm just going to use this rubber handled screwdriver and just use it to press. Okay. So that's just an important thing to remember with any night sights: never pound on anything. There's a tiny glass vial on the inside full of tritium gas. It's super strong when it's installed on the slide, but if you're ever pounding directly on the site, that's how you're gonna break it. So I was able to force it in there. If you can use something like this, maybe a block of wood, just to put some pressure on it, it'll sit right down in there and it's a very nice sturdy fit. So I'm gonna go ahead and try the screw that came with it. That came, well, they both came with it. The one that came pre-installed on the site. And it, the angle is a little difficult here. So I was able to get that on there. Um, let me just try that other screw just to see which one's better. I'll just try them both and I'll tell you. Be careful about that angle because it was kind of binding up on me at first. All right, got that one out. So that's our Gen th Glock Gen 3 screw. All right, and in this impossibly tiny little baggie, Took me a second to get that out. I've got the Gen 4 screw. So let's give that a shot. So I'm gonna place it in my tool, get it seated. And a lot of you who are fairly mechanically inclined know, th know this. Turn it back a little bit till you feel it want to find those threads. There you go. And then start screwing it in. That way you just make sure you're not cross threading anything. Okay, I was actually able to get that one on too. So, I don't know, if they both fit, I think I'm actually gonna go with the first one because it's slightly longer. It has about one more thread of engagement. So if they both work, I'd rather have more thread engagement, right? So let me get this guy back out of here. So maybe I'm wrong, maybe somebody from True Glow will get onto me, but I'm gonna install it now with the Gen 3 the Glock Gen 3 screw. And this time I'm gonna put a tiny, tiny little dab of Loctite on there. So think how much you want on there and then do even less than that. There we go. Cause this stuff will make a mess if you don't do it right. So, and always this is blue. That's what you want. You don't want the permanent stuff. Blue is more than enough. I think Loctite has some of the worst packaging ever that bright red bottle that says blue on it. Super confusing. Much less people who are colorblind. But anyway, we're getting that screw in there. Use your tool. I'm pushing it right all the way against the front because it's a little different than a Glock, but it'll go. Alrighty, we got it in there. Let's make sure the barrel fits just to make sure we didn't do anything stupid. Looks like it fits fine. I don't feel it dragging one bit. So cool. We got our front side on. Now let's go to the rear side. Put my Loctite up for a second. 
So the rear sight is just a dovetail. A dovetail rear sight design is fairly common. So for that, I'm gonna use this awesome tool by Real Avid. So there are Glock sight tools, but what's super cool about this Real Avid tool is you can use it for anything with a dovetail. A lot of them, you have to line up a plate with these rails where your slide would normally fit on the rails of the gun and you have to have different plates. Like the MGW is kind of the, the industry leading tool and it comes with all these different, they call them shoes, these little plates. But what's awesome about the real Avid tool is it doesn't need these plates at all. So you take this, push it down, turn these big knobs on top. That kind of lets the pressure up. So you see it sits nice and nice and high now. So we can go ahead and get our slide in there. So I'm gonna use these little side knobs to hold down on the slide. Now I don't think you have to be perfect with it, but yes, you do generally want to keep it centered. So that looks centered enough. And you want to do that so that you're not binding it up, right? You're, you're pushing it directly horizontally. So if you need to make adjustments, you can loosen one of these side screws, tighten the other one. Pretty cool tool, how versatile it is. So I'm gonna push, I'm gonna line this up. You turn the big knob, fairly obvious, to move, see how it moves this whole boss back and forth. So I'm gonna wanna generally get it lined up with the slide. And we're gonna wanna go from the left, push it out to the right. On Glocks, it doesn't really matter, but that's a really good habit to be in. Just cause some guns like HKs, uh, you're supposed to always go in and out from the right because there's a little bit of a taper to it. All right, so you push these down, get it nice and tight. What's really cool about this tool is it's got this nylon stop. So think of it almost like a foot on a piece of furniture or on maybe something in a machine shop, maybe your workbench. You can adjust these feet just like you would level a foot on a tool. You adjust that to get in contact with the slide and you wanna be very careful when you adjust this that this boss doesn't go lower than the sight because what you don't wanna do is while you're pushing your slide off to carve a big groove in your slide. So we got that all set up. So now we're just gonna turn this and we're making sure, okay, we're now contacting our sight. We're not contacting the slide, we're just floating right above it. And then very carefully, we're gonna start turning it. You can see it start moving. Looks like we're doing it right, and you just keep going. So no need to be in a rush. This is a very fine thread, so you're applying a very slow motion with lots of torque. So it's coming out. I'm feeling a little bit more resistance here, but we're getting close. You can see it. All right, and there she goes. All right, so we've got our True Glow replacement sight here. You'll notice there's a little set screw on the top. So when you buy these sights, it comes with this instruction card, which is four Glocks, but most of it still applies. They talk about the rear sight installation. Basically, they're just saying use the hex tool that it comes with. Make sure that you back this set screw out a little bit. There we go. So I'm just gonna completely remove it because I do wanna use Loctite. So I'm gonna remove that little bitty grub screw. We're gonna put that in later. And the reason you don't want that in there is you don't want it hanging down, carving a groove in your slide. So now that we've got this out, I think we can take a look at going ahead, moving the sight pusher. I'm just gonna use this screwdriver just kind of lift it into place so my fingers aren't in the way so you can see what I'm talking about so you're gonna get it lined up in the dovetail here and you're just gonna push it on in and there's a little bit of resistance and that's good because that means it's it's fitting in there nice and tight but you know, nothing, nothing tremendous resistance wise. So I'm definitely feeling quite a bit more resistance now just cause I'm pushing metal on metal. 
but we're getting very close. Back it up a little bit. And if you do a lot of these, you could actually mount this whole Real Avid unit down to your bench. But I do a few of these a year, so I don't need to, it's worth having the tool for sure. If you are just gonna put on one set of sights, I would say go to your gunsmith. Go find an expert, somebody who's really competent at this. But if you're gonna do probably more than two or three a year, then you might as well just get the tool. Do it at home, right? All right, I think I actually went just a smidge too far. Just barely though. So I'm just gonna bring it back a teeny tiny bit. Okay, take a look at that. All right, that looks fantastic. So we're gonna go ahead and push down, loosen up these top screws. So we're taking the tension off of the slide from the top. So this will allow that, that boss to float over the top. See how it comes up like that? I'm just gonna push it back down, get these real loose. Okay, now we can unlock these side screws. And I appreciate that everything on this Real Avid tool, just big, easy to use, thumb screw, screws, nothing delicate. It's just great for, for people like me who kind of manhandle stuff a little bit and you need something just really rugged. We'll loosen up the top just a little bit more. Alrighty, go ahead and pull it out. Set our tool aside, and there we go. We've got those sights on there. I think I did a really good job of centering that up. I'll go to the range, and that's how I'll really be able to tell. I may need to adjust it a teeny bit, but for a tiny compact pistol like this, I mean, we're talking pretty short distances anyway, but I think that looks good. So there's just one last step. Take that little set screw that you took out of the rear sight earlier, make sure to apply your blue Loctite and let it cure for 24 hours before firing the pistol. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Now you can take this compact, affordable, great little pistol and tap into the whole world of Glock aftermarket sights, including Tritium Night Sights. Hope you found this helpful. Good luck with your installation. Until next time, stay safe, be free, and never stop seeking adventure.